What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. And I got some things I want to cover. I mentioned this um, not as in detail as I wanted to, so I figured I'd put it in better perspective and elaborate for you guys. And that's regarding top ranked fighters. Um, I definitely think Golden Boy is holding the torch in terms of um, better possible matches that can be made in the future um, based on their roster. Whereas top rank, I feel like there is a ceiling to what they can do for a variety of different reasons. Um, we all know their long-standing beef with Golden Boy and top rank. And I think it hurts top rank at the moment more than it hurts Golden Boy because Golden Boy has, again, like the 140-pound division is the best division in boxing, the most stacked division in boxing. And they have a lot of options that they can do based on their relationships and who they work with and who they don't work with. Um, so this video is contingent on the fact that top rank has to use top rank to make fights versus golden boy using golden boy um, to make fights who has a better shot at making the fights that fans would want to see and good business decisions so just a brief overview of some of the top rank fighters um, you got people like Fernando Montiel no need to already crushed him um, he's more of a kind of like a gatekeeper to me I don't really see him being as dominant as he once was, and uh, I don't know. Um, that's at bantamweight anyway, so I don't even know all the fighters that he could possibly fight. Then you have Mikey Garcia, the undefeated prospect, brother of Robert Garcia, just beat Orlando Salido in a dominant fashion. Um, who is he going to fight? I would love to see him fight Gary Russell Jr., but Gary Russell Jr. is with Golden Boy. I don't know if that fight would happen. Mikey Garcia He's supposed to fight Juan Ma Lopez. And hypothetically, let's say Garcia beats Lopez. Then what? Who is he going to fight? He's not going to fight Nonito Donaire because Nonito's supposed to move up and wait. Um, but the, the conflict of interest is Robert Garcia is the brother of Mikey Garcia and also the trainer of Nonito Donaire. So Garcia, Robert Garcia said, even if Nonito found a new trainer and went somewhere else, he wouldn't fight against Nonito out of respect because he said Nonito's like family as well. So we're not going to see a Mikey Garcia versus Nonito Donaire um, fight. So who's Mikey Garcia going to fight? Possibly Gamboa. Gamboa's with SMS Promotions. Um, I would like to see that fight. But I don't see that many options. And this is the point of this video. I don't really see that many options for Mikey Garcia based on who Top Rank works with and who Top Rank has. Um, Mikey Garcia, if he beats Juan Ma Lopez, I see him fighting possibly a Gamboa or a Salido rematch. We're going to have to get a lot of rematches using top ranks roster. Um, Mikey Garcia in Abner Mars, I would love to see that. Or the winner of Abner Mars versus Ponce de Leon, but they're Golden Boy fighters, so I doubt we'll get to see that. Um, moving on, you have Roberto Marroquin, who lost to... Regendahl, and that's not a bad person to lose to because Regendahl is highly skilled and seasoned. However, I'm pretty sure his confidence is probably shook. Um, and I don't know, even though he shined in spots against Regendahl, he beat uh, Adrian Broner and Gary Russell Jr. in the amateurs. Amateurs is a whole different ball ballgame. Um, I'd have to see more before I could say I could picture Roberto Marroquin dominating the featherweight division. Um, who else do they have? Let's move on. You have the Mexican Russian, um, again, a Robert Garcia fighter. Uh, Gretovich is a, a Robert Garcia fighter and he's not going to fight Mikey Garcia for that reason, because again, Garcia is the brother and Gretovich is being trained by Robert Garcia. So that's a fight we're not going to see. We can't really see Gretovich versus Nonito Donaire. If Donaire moves up because the same conflict of interest with the brother slash trainer relationship. Okay, moving on. Um, yeah, Wilfredo Vasquez Jr. And Nonito already beat him. He's a solid fighter, but again, I don't see him as being someone that they could pass the torch for. He's um, getting older and... He's the son of a legend, but at the same time, I just don't see him dominating his division. You got Nonito Donaire, a very tough task against um, Hiermo Rigendal, and I'm looking forward to that fight a lot. 
depending on what happens with that fight, I think Donaire is going to move up and wait. But who is he going to fight? I mean, we're not going to see him fight Abner Mars or Ponce de Leon unless they can squash the beef and work together. Um, possibly Nonito and Gamboa. Um, again, he can't fight Marky Garcia because of the trainer conflict of interest. Moving on. Mike Alvarado versus Brandon Rios. Mike Alvarado versus Brandon Rios. Um, I think Brandon Rios wins this one. If he doesn't, then we're going to have to see a rematch uh, or like a trilogy out of this. That's one option. But let's say Brandon Rios wins in the same fashion. It's a hard-fought fight, and then he wins via TKO in some round. There's absolutely no reason to fight Mike Alvarado for a third time. Actually, I feel that would be disrespectful to Brandon Rios if Bob Arum does that. Like, this guy has a, a tough, hard-as-nails opponent, Mike Alvarado, and Brandon Rios musters up enough courage and strength and stamina and conditioning and takes a beating in order to beat Mike Alvarado which is what I think Brandon Rios will have to do. Whoever wins this fight, Alvarado versus Brandon Rios, is going to be hard fought just based on their styles and what the other person brought in the first fight. So whoever wins this fight, I feel, is going to deserve the fight. But if if my prediction search correct, Brandon Rios will win this fight. And if he does win the fight and Bob Arum makes him fight him a third time, even though he won the first two with no controversy in a, in a knockout fashion, I think that's messed up. So... I don't want to see a trilogy to that if Brandon Rios wins um, by TKO. It just makes no sense. Even though it's a fight of the year, they were exciting fights, it just doesn't make any sense to keep giving Mike Alvarado an opportunity to come back and beat him and and um, keep putting Brandon Rios through a tough, grueling fight three times just for ratings uh, when he already beat the dude twice. So these are all hypotheticals, obviously. Um, other than that, Brandon Rios can move up and fight Marquez, Timothy Bradley, or Pacquiao, possibly Jesse Vargas. And that's it. So as far as career handling, I don't see that as being a good look because either he has to most likely fight out Alvarado and let's say he beats him and he has to fight the same dude for a, a third time even though he convincingly won the first two or move up to welterweight. I mean, those are his biggest options because the Golden Boy has the most stacked division, they have the 140 division. And even though there's plenty of matches that could or should be made, I don't see Brandon Rios being able to fight those guys. If Adrian Broner goes to 140, Lucas Matisse, Danny Garcia, these are all Golden Boy. Lamont Peterson, all Golden Boy. Um, so I really don't see what Brandon Rios would do aside from a rematch with Alvarado, a third fight, or moving up to welterweight. Um, Marcito Jesta, he already lost to Gamboa. Um... I don't see him being dominant in the division. Chavez Jr., he lost to Sergio Martinez, his biggest fight. He was smoking weed, and he lost. There are fights that Chavez Jr. can make. They Again, a rematch with Sergio Martinez. I would like to see him fight Daniel Gale. I don't know who Gale signed to or if that match would work uh, promotion-wise, but I'd like to see that. I would also love to see a Gennady Golovkin Triple G fight versus Chavez Jr. However, Triple G works with Golden Boy or Golden Boy. So, doubt that fight will happen. Um, Jorge Arce just got knocked out brutally from Nonito. Said he's going to retire. Said he's not going to retire. He might retire. He's already getting up in age. He had Morrigan down, depending on his performance with Nonito. Either way, time is ticking. He's getting older. He still has a skill set. But if he loses to Nonito, that's going to... Um, that's not going to do much for his career. Because, one, he's getting older... If he beats Nonito, is the best possible situation for his career. If he beats Nonito convincingly, everyone would be like, okay, this dude has skill. I mean, you're dethroning someone like Nonito who hasn't lost in a minute. In a minute. But if he loses, it's not going to do much for his career because, again, he's older. He doesn't have a huge fan base in the States aside from hardcore boxing fans. And that's a loss. So your biggest challenge that people feel on paper in the pros, you lost to, hypothetically. So he really needs to win in order to have his career see see um, a brighter future. Kelly Pavlik was supposed to fight Ward. Ward was rehabbing his shoulder. Then he says he's retiring, so he's retired. Timothy Bradley, he's fighting tonight against Provodnikov. I think he'll beat Provodnikov. Then what? Pacquiao rematch, possibly fight Marquez. 
maybe Jesse Vargas, depending on how Vargas looks tonight, or have Brandon Rios come up and wait. I mean, that's the only real options that I see. Marquez said he was going to retire, said he's not looking for a Pacquiao fifth fight. Um, again, Brandon Rios, Timothy Bradley, Pacquiao, maybe Jesse Vargas or Humberto Soto. Um, that's the only things that I could really see for Marquez using only top rank type people. Um, Mike Jones just got knocked out brutally by Randall Bailey. Manny Pacquiao knocked out brutally by Marquez. I don't know if you guys see a pattern. A lot of these people are either fading stars, Jorge Arce, um, like basically fading stars that are not in their prime or they are retiring. Jorge Arce got knocked out, said he's retiring. Kelly Pavlik retired. Juan Marquez doesn't know if he wants to retire. He's not He's not a bum or washed up. He can still make good fights, but he doesn't even know if he wants to continue fighting. Another pattern, fighters who are coming off of brutal career-changing knockouts. Um, Juan Mar Lopez, Orlando Salido, destroyed him at home in Puerto Rico two times. That's going to be hard to overcome, and especially if Mikey Garcia beats him in their next fight, especially by TKO, then... The most I see is Juan Mar Lopez becoming the fighter that had all the potential in the world, but when the light shined the brightest and it was his time to step up, he lost to those big fights if Mikey Garcia beats him. Um, and then I think he'll be more or less a gatekeeper. Um, Mike Jones, brutal knockout, Randall Bailey. I don't see him being a top welterweight at all. Too much competition, relies solely on, like more on power. And again, he hasn't even fought anyone elite at all except for a season, Randall Bailey. And I don't think Randall Bailey's elite. I think Randall Bailey just has a killer right hand and power from hell. And he got crushed by him. So imagine him against the top people at welterweight. Timothy Bradley, I think, would box his head off. Um, Keith Thurman would probably even knock him out or at least win and beat him. Manny Garcia, another person, brutal knockout. So, again, the pattern I see with top-ranked fighters with these matches, you got people who are getting up there in age, retired, fading. Jorge Arce, he had more Regan Dallas getting older. Kelly Pavlik, retired. Marquez, 38, about to be 39 probably this year. Um, Pacquiao's getting up in age. And there's, a lot of these people are coming from brutal knockouts. Mike Jones, Pacquiao, Juan Mar Lopez, um, it's going to be hard to make interesting fights. It's kind of like a sale. I don't know if you ever had a sale. It's like buy one, get one half off. And let's say you're shopping at Coles for a tie and it's buy one, get one half off. And you find a tie you really like and you see the sign, buy one, get one half off. But you can't even find a second tie that you really even want. So it, it it's kind of like a waste of the sale. Like you either A, have to buy one tie and not even participate in the sale. Or B, buy a tie just because you're getting it for half off and it's not necessarily one that you normally would have bought at full price. It's just something you're settling with. And I think that's what we're going to have to do with a lot of top rank fights. We're going to have to settle for a lot of rematches. Chavez Jr. versus Sergio Martinez. Alvarado versus Rios part three. Manny Pacquiao versus um, fucking Marquez five or Marquez versus, or excuse me, Tim Bradley versus Pacquiao two. A lot of sequels, I think. Um, depending on what Rigandau and Nonito's first fight is like, maybe a rematch in that. Um, we're gonna have to fu we're gonna have to settle for these because they don't have many great options in terms of um, matching fights because their roster is not deep enough. So that's really what I see in the sport with top rank. Um, it's looking very dismal. The roster is looking dismal. I know you guys like. Um, football and basketball and different sports probably it's just like a football team like the Niners or any team that has a deep roster they have more options like it's cool when you have an elite quarterback and then your backup quarterback doesn't suck too and when you have different players like different wide receivers you can go to different running backs like the Niners it makes it more interesting and to me Golden Boy has a deeper roster. They have more options, more... Even their losers in fights can make more fights. Like Danny Garcia versus Zab Judah, the loser of that fight, can go on to fight people like... Like, say Zab Judah loses, he could fight a Jose or other interesting matches if he has a good showing against Danny Garcia. If it's just an annihilation, then I don't know. But 
Um, I think even the losers of Golden Boy fights, Lucas Matisse versus Peterson, even if he loses, there's still more options for him than winners at top rank. If Peterson loses to Matisse, he can go ahead to fight Amir Khan for a rematch, and that'll be a good fight. You know what I mean? So that's what I think. Let me know. Leave a comment. Subscribe. Let me know what you think. Top rank. Again, they're looking kind of dismal. That's my opinion. Till next video, Ego signing off.